Now everything has to stream and be recorded and be whatever. And it's amazing. Like, what are you drinking? Oh, I, I, I went, I don't really like Chick-fil-A because you know, they hate homosexuals and all that stuff, but it was convenient. It was the only thing that hadn't been like mangled on, on uh, Lexington. So I got my Dr. Pepper and my half, yeah, it's half Dr. Pepper and half Cherry Coke. Come so on. I definitely have Pepper. A I love Dr. Pepper. I haven't had a Dr. Pepper in so long. Oh. Really? Can I have it? Can, it, can you transport that? I them? wish there was, eventually they probably will have such technology, but until then, if, if the zombies don't come and the UFOs and Godzilla, I will definitely buy you the biggest Dr. Pepper when I finally meet you Thank and you. we'll have the best time. Okay. okay so I'm just, just deleting the Facebook thing. Okay, good. Take one second. Save changes. All right, we'll make that. Um, edit. There's so many people using the bandwidth that they never anticipated it would be, you know, everyone's trapped in their home. So now we're gonna, you know, go 400% on the bandwidth. So everything's a little bit slower, but we're still good. All right, let me, let me change that. All right, Facebook, good. Make it live, save changes. Just wanna make sure everybody sees you, everybody. And then we'll make a big story out of this and it'll be wonderful. Yeah. Um, this is really great what you're doing because my God, it is, oh, it's bad. No production, no anything. No, and then people can't even like have a waitering job in the meantime until things pick up. Nothing. So it's awful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> actually, before I started doing any of this stuff, yeah. um, my father had said, you know, you want to do finance, you're going to forget business school. I'm going to send you to Hong Kong. And that's where I moved right after college. So I, you know, by being sink or swim, I really learned a lot about finance because, you know, they work every day of the week pretty much. And they are so smart. This is a really, really bad situation. Forget just 40 million unemployed. It takes six to nine months for each unemployed person to affect the economy. And then you have, look at America, it's a mess. Global people, you know, I mean, we were selling two billion to three billion dollars a day in treasury bills to China to finance the debt that we owe yeah. to China. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting a cash advance on one card to pay the cash advances interest on the other card, and now those countries are saying, "We don't, you're not a AAA rating. We don't trust you. Look at this. It's, it's insane." And all their value of it, uh, investments and stuff. It's whatever. That's a whole other thing. But we're going to save the arts right now and. Um, Let's see. Nope. We are live. Let's do it. I'm going to say this right, and you're going to be so excited. Consuela <laughs> Vanderbilt Costin. Costin? Yes. Or Costin? Costin? That's what I thought. I, like I asked around. Costin's Costin? nice. Costin's, I like Costin. I like Costin, too. And given my name, I've been called everything. So Me I too. finally get to meet you, and it's, it's a pleasure because um, – Everybody talks about everybody else in New York. That's the greatest pleasure, really. But everyone says nice things about you. And I said, can't be. Like, nobody's that nice and really cares and is that lovable. But apparently there is someone, and that's you. Um, how is life right now? And then we'll get to the amazing thing you did. Um, life, at, listen, I, I'm so, I really, truly, I feel blessed that I'm right now, I'm currently in the Adirondacks, and we're just in nature, and but we've been in New York for the past two and a half months. And honestly, um, it's just, it's a terrifying time. It is. I think the, I think, I, I don't know, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. It's the unknown, right? It's so daunting, right? Just, and I feel like we get pieces of information here, but nothing, nothing makes sense. And we as humans are having to go against the grain of everything that we know, from being tactile to hugging, to kissing, to thing. You know, I invented a whole new thing with the mask where it's just the wink, but you don't know if it's a twitch or some weird thing. <laughs> it's like, that's our new, you know, common reality. I'm like, look, that's it. I'm so glad you laughed because I've said that to other people and they didn't laugh. I'm like, that's really, what's... <laughs> it's really funny and clever, uh, you know, and it's true. Are they having a seizure? Let's help them. Or are they, you know, is that the... It's crazy. <laughs> it's a um, whole new thing, yeah. So... um but oh my God, we are in, we are in the unknown. So yeah. the craziest thing is, I don't know if you saw in the papers they had a few exposes on it. But I, as far back as two and a half months ago, I was getting invites to these parties. 
two, 300 people on a rooftop, no lights, drugs, kissing, all that stuff. And I thought, are you people insane? This time it's different. Like um, there was an expression in the stock market, like every 10 years or 12 years, they'd say this time it's different. And it wasn't. This time it is different. It's a global pandemic. You can die or your relative can die or you're, you know, and it's not fair to the healthcare workers. So you want to go party. It should be, if you party, you can't come to the hospital. You're an idiot. But anyway, so no, you're safe and that's I, And actually I was, um, I was hosting a TV show probably right before this started. And same thing, like there was a one point and I apologize to everyone because I was just frivolous. I don't think I was really listening properly. I don't think I was really taking into account about how dangerous this was. And then it was suddenly, it was like between three to four days and suddenly it was the wake up call of like, it's not just about you. That's the most important thing at all. It's, it's about everyone else. It's being socially conscious to take care of everyone else. And that really mm -hmm. is of every age, of every race, of every, and then it is not one specific stereotype. So I just, I think that's so important. Yeah. You're absolutely right. The mask wearing, it's, it's not just, oh, for yourself, it's for everyone else. So collectively, just wear a mask. And, and it's, it's right what you said. Initially, you'd get all these reports and then it'd be contradicted four days later. And they said the subway guys, the poor MTA guys don't have to wear a mask. Oh, well, uh, what is it, 58 of them are dead now? So obviously a mask would have helped. It was tough to see, but I, I took a subway ride and I posted on Facebook and being on that subway, I said, this, this is bad. I'm never getting on a subway again. This is really bad. And then it just started to take off from there. And I said, wow, you know, whatever. But you did something absolutely incredible. And I'm trying to follow the timeline on this. It seems that, um, okay, Soho Muse, the trusted source for creative professionals. Now, was this started about three years ago or did you take something that was started and, and tinker with it? You're, so you're the, the, um, the, the baby started actually a long time ago in 2008 and it's gone through many different versions because of the R and D that we did to really work with creatives and understand, you know, being a singer songwriter myself, um, what they yeah, were billboard needed. topping billboard topping no lightweight there serious thank you thank you um but figuring out you know in my own necessity really that you know i was on tour um in germany and literally my choreographers in la management's in germany i'm on a tv show and we have 24 hours to replace a dancer it's like these similar problems kept happening and i'm like how do you really build a trusted vetted community of creatives so that you can, in a local environment, you can build, whether it's fashion shows, feature films, music videos, a really vetted community. So we opened up Soho Muse into three tiers. We launched our tier one for up and coming talent because I started speaking at FIT and all these amazing institutions and really learning that a lot of young creatives didn't have the opportunity to learn what to do, how to build their brand, right? So giving them internship opportunities. And so as Soho Muse has progressed, we've really been able to procure a lot of job opportunities for our talent. Um, and that to me is the greatest gift on the planet. We are not in any way disintermediating the agent or manager um, or peer. We come in and we help to encourage. We um, provide additional opportunities, opportunities that maybe, you know, between the makeup artists and the hairstylist, all creatives kind of end up working together. So what I saw and our amazing team inside of Soho Muse is that once the pandemic started, that a lot of our extraordinary entertainers who are normally either on tour, they're Sasha musicians, they're choreographers, and they're losing so much income. So if we provided them with an opportunity where they could get really up close and personal, like a very raw experience with their fans, um, where they could offer them to either for ticket sales or tip and donation, um, or to give their performance to a charity of choice. And each one of our members has made revenue, which is amazing, additional income. They've all asked to come back. We do sound checks the night before to make sure I want my artists to feel the same way that, you know, if they were on tour right now, that they would be doing their sound checks. So it's a, a very, very personalized experience and fans they never have got the chance to actually get so up close and personal with this, this talent. 
and people love that. I mean, that's an incredible thing that you're doing to help uh, the, the, the creatives, but in the social media world, everyone really feels they're up close just because they see the picture of so-and-so in the kitchen cooking or they're doing their hair in the bathroom. But through you actually interacting with them and having the ability to maybe hire them to do certain things or whatever, that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's true access. Yeah. A, a friend of mine, Crystal Brown, she's the star of um, Hamilton, the wife. Yeah. She was supposed to come on and sing uh, at my studio and we we're going to do all this big stuff. Corona happened. There goes me in the studio. There goes Hamilton. So you've got, like you said, everybody. There's nowhere to turn. And so thank God you put this up because at least even the public would say, oh, can you do this or sing a song for me? And it's going to be my retirement party. It's going to be a thousand of us or a hundred of us. And you sing for us. That's awesome. And there right. is stuff going on. It's just you need access. And that, let's be honest, too. I, we're all looking to escape a little bit. It's our world right now is so overly saturated, you know what I mean? And, and with heartbreak, really. Yeah. And I think that to take a little bit of time and to just escape and to have an artist really explain their story and talk about their journey and take you through their songs and their process. I mean, to me, there's no better world on the planet. So selfishly, it's actually the greatest gift to sit and watch them, you know? You just described what I'm lucky enough to get to do a lot and yeah. talk with people. Yesterday, there's a 12 year old kid. He's coming out in this brand new movie from Paramount Pictures. The first time they're putting a movie out, he's 12. He wrote all the songs, played the guitar and created this movie. So you're giving the ability for people to have the experience that I had and they will lose their mind because when you're literally watching them talk about I mean, this is beyond behind the scenes. It's not like backstage at a concert. It's with the person. And they could be in their living room talking. So you can count me in for this. Um, <laughs> Stance, but I love what you're doing. My goodness, look at that. Because you're also uh, nurturing and you're discovering people that, yes, a lot of people know, but then the inside things that people don't know, right? And that's as human beings. That's why we're in such crazy time because, again, we're going so against the grain of our normal behavior. It's like we're trying to hold on to anything that gives us some semblance of what is normal, right? Or normal. What we're used to, at least, even if it wasn't normal, it's what we're used to. And now everything is gone. The platform is gone. The foundation's gone. Um, and, and yes, like you're saying about um, hearing from these people, Joanna Coles, I believe she's still uh, editor-in-chief of Marie Claire. She used to take a bus three miles to school each way when she was in high school. They tried to set her coat on fire and bullied her so badly she had to walk both ways. So I hear things you just, you know, about glamour and you think this is amazing. Or I hear from a publicist about someone, I'll tell you off camera, who in LA wanted this person to go to the police station or town hall and make it so the lights from her home to the studio would be staggered so she'd never have a red light. Yep. So you hear these things, which is the kind of stuff you'll hear with these people, the creatives, it's invaluable. I mean, and we do need so much distraction now because everybody's already watched. I've seen everything on Netflix. I'm watching Spanish Netflix with subtitles. I'm not kidding you. No, I agree. And I can't even keep up. I'm trying to read. I'm like, the guys are, and, and, and I'm kind of too nervous to read because the situation is, so I don't have that peaceful mind where I can focus I need that distraction. And more than anything, we need the interaction, the human part. Um, with this, it says music, film, art, fashion, beyond. You said you have makeup artists, hair, uh, hair and makeup and all this stuff. Um, how did this build up? Because you have some great people that are in it. When it first started, were people skeptical? Because I think everyone is, oh, this online thing. And, and it's actually so needed, what, what you're doing. Because I tried acting 20 years ago back on Sex in the City. Oh, man, you could see me in everything. I'm the worst there is. You know, all, you know, all <laughs> gossip girl, whatever. I'll show you videos. You'll you'll die laughing. I love it. But there was never a really a, a centralized place. And one thing that's very important, he said, is you're not interrupting the manager uh, or the agent. No. But for the most part, you never have access to a manager or agent who can do anything until you kind of already got somewhere where they can write a contract and make a percentage. So nobody develops talent. I was told that a long time ago, 
you're on your own until you're something, something that gets a payday and a good one. And then we and get, then we get, there's, 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 there's obviously the, the, there's the four to five, four to five. The agents, right? The ICMs, the CAAs of the world, and they handle a lot of different divisions. But we also know that creatives are really multifaceted. So how do you nurture talent where I can be an actor, a singer, a dancer, all in one place? How can I, you know, and then what am I having to have five different websites in order to cater to myself? So that was very important for us too, and building out these extraordinary portfolio galleries, both private and public. So I can use this to be able to really showcase as my own personalized website inside of this ecosystem. So it's really oh, gives wow. creators amazing tools to be the best of themselves. I'm a very visual person. So that's why also in the R&D and the technology, it took a lot of time to like finesse it and make sure that everyone was like, this is me, this is my brand, this is the best of myself. So that's been really an extraordinary gift to put that together and, and watch it grow. And just as you said, you know, in the beginning, we started with a hundred ambassadors and from all different verticals and then really watched what they needed and what wasn't working for them and build that and then build an audience from there and build that network from there. Um, and then talk to institutions and schools and unions and right. So it's just, and it's, and that, and then also being able to take this, which you'll love and obviously our next event, taking this from online to offline. So that really oh, being able yeah, to build right. these experiential, extraordinary environments where all of our members are interacting and then they're connecting. So, so many success stories have ended up actually happening also offline. So that, that to me, it's like the community and this extraordinary world just keeps growing and building. Um, and now we have this whole 3D element of these distribution portals. So especially during the pandemic, which is so interesting, that- Oh, German, oh, yeah, I got it. Right, two, day, <laughs> two days before um, the Oscars, we launched in LA and um, we launched with our virtual screening room, which is incredible. And two of our award-winning um, members, they did an incredible documentary called To Be Me. And it's a transgender, amazing- I saw that, that was everywhere. It was Soho House or something, you were there, wasn't it something? I was jealous. I was jealous. I've lived in LA many times and I said the one time I should have been in LA, but whatever. Yeah, that, that was amazing. That was our baby. So, so um, and then Gigi Gorgeous hosted it with me, which is incredible. So we had this unbelievable amalgamation of not only the transgender community supporting her and supporting the rights of what this film meant for four young families to be transitioning and what that meant. It was just absolutely beautiful. Craig Singer, who is the director, and Sylvia, just an amazing team uh, duo. And so, and then, um, so these virtual screening rooms that basically it houses all the content. So I can have multiple videos in one room, all the metadata based on the people that were involved in the project that take you back to their Soho News profiles. So it's like now we have built now between entertainment and technology bridging into one, which Again, that's what I've been trying to do for a long time. How do you manage that and make it really seamless? For the people that aren't so tech savvy, don't care about that, but they want to represent their work, their content, who they are to the best of their ability. A couple things about what you just said. Um, incredible event. So great what you're doing. Uh, the LGBTQ, I'm sorry if I don't get all the things correctly, but it's just, it's, it's ridiculous that people are treated differently because of who they are or what they like. It's it, just look at what the country is now. Everybody's setting things on fire because of another problem of people not getting along. But um, the two things, one, you mentioned about technology. A lot of the creatives aren't good at it. Yeah. They can give you the best monologue. They can paint, they can sculpt, they can dance, but you give them the computer or the Instagram and it's that, and now you walk into an audition, or at least when there were auditions, how many followers, how many Instagram, how many Facebook, how many of this, what's your interaction level, how many impressions? Before they even care if you're any good, forget accepting you on your talent alone. They want, well, look at why, you know, why Kylie Jenner was walking in, in uh, Victoria's Secret. Yeah. Hey, 58 million followers or 158 million, instant audience, so take her. But you really have to have that. So it's great that your, your portfolio, or the portfolio on your platform helps people like that because you can't do it now. It's not Brad Pitt, can, he doesn't have to tweet, 
he's Brad Pitt. But anyone in the past, I'd say seven, eight years, if you're not doing it, it's hopeless. It's unless uh, America's Got Talent and Simon Cowell finds you, which he will hire people to do your social media. You're not going anywhere. It's and that's so true. And you know what? That's it's funny you said that. And even in watching the concert series, there's so much about that that uh, you know most creatives they don't they don't really. That's not what's important to them. It's their craft. It's their talent, right? And so, how do you make something that's really seamless and easy? Just like a lot of creatives don't necessarily want to market themselves. They just want to be in their craft and have it out there, right? Which is why they have PR. Which is, so it's, we also have a concierge system that really promotes on all of our social media and all of our news feeds to keep encouraging our talent and our members that they're not alone and that we support them and that we're really there to nurture that. I think that that's everything in life. It's, it's how do you really feel supported how do you find mentors? Sorry. Well, no matter what stage you're at in your career, especially in the early stages and, and having been at it for a while, you wind up going to back then drama bookshop and buying all these books on how to become an actor, you know, how to become a model, or you go on to Amazon and all these how to books. There's some of them have good instruction, but there's no human element because it's just, oh, you should do this, this, and this. Your thing at least has a group of people where it's a network, and there's also, like you said, the concierge that helps you, because you can have a great plan with the book, but putting it into action, it's, it's, it really doesn't work, because I know countless people who, who did it, and I was one of them. I, I, had a, I had a killer headshot. My uncle did taxes for one of the best headshot guys in New York, and he called me up one day, he goes, so-and-so is doing your headshot for free. I almost died. Genius. I got the headshot, and what I had, nothing. I had a nice picture for my living room. Oh my so God. this is beyond valuable, and um, it's, I don't know, I, I, maybe it's me just thinking business-wise, I could see in three years ICM or one of those guys trying to buy you out, because this could get so competitive with them and their, you know, super inflated management fees and things like that, and also they only, look, let's be honest, any company, whether it's a PR company or a talent agency, their number one client is themselves. So what do they do? They focus on the biggest people that they have. And if you are whatever, a Kardashian or something, you're going to get 99% of the entire place's effort and, uh, and strength. And then you're a little guy. What can you bring in if you're not bringing in a $10 million contract or even a million dollar contract? You're useless. And so that's I've seen that. I mean, yeah. that's why now I kind of get a little bit of an offer here or there. I go, I'm going to share it. I made it. Yeah. I go, you do something for me that's reasonable. I'll give you some money. But as far as do I need you now? No, it took forever. When I needed you, something like you have. No, I've been in these people's offices and they now call me. I go, dude, remember you told me I was good, but can't help me? I go, I'm still good. And I can't help you. <laughs> yeah. I do have a little bit of that, hey, You're like, you hey. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I go, I'm just getting warmed up. Because another thing that you point out that's so important with the creatives, for a long time, I've been doing this for like 10 years. So many people were like, I didn't hear of you until this point or that point or even recently, like the past two years. I said, well, I work for a TV show in Europe, but my stuff that I do on my own, I love the interview. But to be honest, Consuela, I would come home with the interview of somebody like, you know, like a Joan Rivers, somebody really good. I'd show my parents and my sister and it would go to YouTube and I did nothing, nothing. There was never any sense of self-promotion or I, I just wanted the next interview because I guess like like a ballerina or something. I love the activity, the performance of it. Yeah. I never thought, do I sell it? Do I do this? Do I that? Do I? Now things are very different. We had a whole new team in here. Uh, we're going for big stuff. But I, I was lost because even if I wanted to do it, I made a website. And for like six weeks, literally my mom, sister, dad, and myself not only posted my interviews, but we did a thing of what's happening in the celebrity world. I mean, literally, my mom's like this. She's going, Justin Bieber's throwing eggs at people's houses. And we did. Did it help? Did it do anything? Nothing. There's so many websites out there. There's so much going on. If they don't have something like your product and, and like a concierge guiding you, it's a digital battlefield. I mean, it forget it. And you do a lot of work with RTL. And I've worked with RTL. I love it. Like, what an amazing network. It's so great. I, I just shot with them a week ago about a thing called QAnon. 
okay. which is a, a very quick. It's a extreme right wing group that's on 4chan and 8chan. Supposedly, someone at the highest level, Q, has access to military things and government things. That Obama, Clinton, George Soros, all the media elites who have been weaponized by the CIA, all the super rich, are satanic worshiping child mutilators and sacrificers and child rapists. Okay. They believe it to the point that this didn't really make the news. Some lady gathered all her knives and live streamed going to kill George, uh, Joe Biden. They stopped her. I mean, this is the level of insanity. So I do that for RTL. I love RTL. They pick up all the stuff all the time. So I want to talk to you about that afterwards. They are amazing. So Germany, just so you know, one of my one of my videos, which I will send to you. They would love you, the blonde, beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, that's their thing. I love Germany. It's been an amazing market. Um, we had this one of my songs is called "Feel So Alive" that stayed on the U.S. Billboard charts for about sixteen weeks, and the video was done by this amazing director, Tim Cox, and he came to me, and his concept was something that was very real to him about this morticianer and about seeing, so wait till you see this video. Anyway, this video ended up being banned in about 10 countries. Yeah, that's my girl. <laughs> you show that to do it, Venezuela. <laughs> Just oh. kidding, okay? You're like NWA, except a lot lighter. That's it, yes. And your Dr. Pepper, which I want, which you're gonna give to me. <laughs> you tell me where you are, I'll Amazon case to you, I swear to God. Promise, deal. Yeah, I'm serious, man. Okay. I'm on right. camera. It's hard to back out on camera. That's well, our president knows that's, not to, but that's... Right. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, so the video, the mortician, <laughs> what happened? All right. And you have to watch it. There, I really was in a morgue, and I really spent some time in that morgue, and I really was locked up for about two hours. And there's a tear that comes out, and that was a very legitimate real <laughs> tear. That's an organic, real... Not real tear. No method there. No. No. And uh, <laughs> I have claustrophobia, and yeah. So anyway, um, that video was released and banned in 10 countries and Germany, God bless Germany, opened beautifully with open arms. Like, we embrace you. <laughs> we so like, who put that on the kids' channel after the cartoons? Oh my God. <laughs> I, said, I have to yes. see this. Oh, it's good. Oh, wow. I'm very proud of this video. And I'm even more proud that it was banned in 10 countries. <laughs> I would too. That is a badge of honor. Oh my, that's incredible. I had my first interview banned on okay. Facebook. Ooh, uh, what did you yeah, say? I didn't, you were speaking. I didn't say it. <gasps> this guy, Ron Russell, 80 year old guy. He's married to another man. And he knew all the old people from Hollywood, the real legends. His okay. best friends were like Lana Turner uh, and Jane Russell, um, all, all of them. And he just started going, well, she wasn't really lesbian, but she would for fun sometimes. And he was gay, but he was gay because he had to for his career. And he just went off and everyone's past. They're no longer even with us. And he just for 30 minutes, oh, oh my God, all the stuff. Oh no, um, oh, no. so and, long. Uh, Next thing you know, shoop, it's down. And the list was forever of people making comments and how dare you, because they have a huge radio show, these two guys. Oh, um, actually, let me write that down. You should get on their radio show. You'll like it. Yes. Um, Wait, that's so naughty. That's so bad. Oh, God. I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you did it, Ron. You, you sick pervert. You disgusting man. I'm like, it was good. So, uh, good. but you, you know that you have to have that kind of stuff. It has to be, you know, you know, my mom, otherwise my mom sent me to, which I've actually never told anyone, but my mom sent me to secretarial school in England, which I really, God bless. I, you know, I love my mom and she had some very interesting ideas. So at 18, um, yes. And it's, it was an, it's an institution. And I mean that like a lot of, you know, lovely ladies in England went to this and it's been in existence for probably 120 years. And, you know, they teach shorthand and all those wonderful skills that you can imagine they're being used so well today. Anyway, um, it's a three month course to which they actually ask you to take your coat off so they can see the, your back posture, no joke. To which I said, are you out of your mind? Do you think I'm ever gonna take my coat off to say, no. Anyway, I was, 
pronounced the worst secretary that they've ever had in 120 years. And I have to tell you, I have never, ever been more proud in my life. Yeah, my mom. Yeah. 120 years. Forget this year or this class. <laughs> this century plus. Consuela, Miss Costin, Costin. Miss Yeah, no. Mm -mm. And kids don't realize that was uh, not electric. That was like you were hitting and you had to manually and manually. then push the thing and all. Oh, I cannot no. see you there. No. And of course, yelling at you for looking at the keys, right? You can't ever look at the keys. I mean, really? 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 God uh, bless. I no. feel for you. That, that was like, that's punishment. I mean, your mom had good intentions, but she has to know her audience. No, that take my code. Point, I'm just saying, I don't know how I ended up. Yep. How I ended up getting in, but it's it's made for great stories and absolutely. And I yeah. the poor ladies next to you probably were like, Do you know who that is? And like, yeah, like I don't think she's gonna work out. It it's not gonna happen. No. Oh, that's funny. She's got um, <laughs> what? No chance. None. <laughs> and, th and then you had to do white out. People don't realize you had to, if you made a mistake, white out, blow on the paper, yes. wait for it to dry two minutes and then retype. And now they're like iPads and this and dictation. And that. They have no idea. No. Um, all right, let's see what, we gotta make sure we cover all this stuff. Okay, um, virtual environments, that's insane. Uh, and, and you're gonna have- Very, very exciting new partnerships that in the next 48 hours, I should be able to announce. So I'll write you back and let you know, but um, some amazing, oh, great. yeah. Because again, with the pandemic, retail, giving opportunities now really both from designers to consumers to what stores are needing, um, payment transactions, social engagements inside of here to actually help and then being able to give our artists opportunities actually in these live events. There's a, it's an incredible marriage actually between, wow. like, as I said, community, entertainment and technology all in one. So I'm really- um, the other thing is, uh, I, lo I love this, saves. Soho Muse, a virtual environment series, saves. Yeah. That's incredible. It worked out really well. And then um, who's Muse Tech? We deserve to talk about them, Muse Tech. So Muse Tech is our subsidiary partnership, and they've been involved in sponsoring our Soho Muse live events and also are a part of our entertainment series. It's our blockchain endeavors. And so we have partners in there and it's, a, it's been an incredible journey with them. So they've so helped blockchain. quite a bit, yes. You got the big boys in there. Oh, all yeah. right. And then according to all these celebrities that are on the site, um, it says, we'll say, Coastin has been hands-on throughout the series, personally overseeing sound checks. Is that PR stuff or you, you over, oh, I don't know. You can come there. To, you, I have a show going on tonight. I did another one last night. Sound checks the the day before, always. Okay. Like I, 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 I know. It's. I promise you. This is and and I did, it's not a give back. It's actually I selfishly take such pride in making sure that this is the best performance. I want every one of our members to leave saying you can't get that kind of hands on personal attention and that they're really really well taken care of and they want to come back and they make money. That is amazing. And Soho Muse, we don't take any money out of this. This is a pure, just, I want them to do well. Yeah, it's, it really is. Oh, that's what it's been such a, a nurturing and wonderful thing during this time that that's our way of being able to do something. So it's been, it's really been important to me. And we haven't publicized it either, which has been really beautiful because again, that makes it so much more organic. I think when people think, wow. you know, when things get so hyped, and it's so big, it's not real. When things are really real and you feel it and you can look at someone's eyes and you know you did that with heart, you know, get by that. Wow. I, that's, that, I wasn't even gonna bring that up because I just assumed you'd, you'd take a cut of something. I mean, if you're on Saturday Night Live, they own you for life. Lauren's got you for life. Every movie <laughs> you ever make it. I mean, sure. It's like, hey, I didn't even shot. You're, you're in the Lauren family. Um, but just seeing you being a roadie at a sound check with that blonde hair flowing all over the place, that is uh, pretty impressive. Um, I also saw ticket sales, but there's a virtual tip jar. 
Yeah. Now it says proceeds to charity of their choosing. So how does that work? Because I imagine there's a tip jar for the performer for themselves. And then there's also a side charity they can choose or. They decide. But so before they do the show, they either say, you know, we want to do this for a specific price or tips or donations, or we're going to donate our performance and every amount of sales that they would get, they donate to their charity of choice. I have to tell you that the tips and donations have been really significant for them. And again, it's an hour of their life where they're not having to leave their house. They've lost so much and here they're making additional income. It's absolutely brilliant, truly. And it's significant. So that's. Well, it's really great that, um, and I'm going to say someone like you does this because so many people in your position, which is doesn't have to work, doesn't have to be nice, doesn't have to do anything. Most of them are just making sure that they're on the Forbes list where they want to be, or their tax shelter is making so they pay no income tax. And here you're trying to save all these people. That is really, it's really great and really nice. And, um, and I know you really feel it and believe it. So every one of their successes, you know, you know, you're part of it. That's a big thing. That means a, a lot. Really big. There's some guy here. I don't know. I don't know if he's important or not. Some Rick McCallan or something like that. Who's that dude? What does he do? Is he the the coffee boy? Yes, he's just a little coffee boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Rick, I said no sugar. Got it. <laughs> Go make another Star Wars. <laughs> um, yeah, my amazing stepfather and second. I mean, he's you know, I feel very blessed. I have two extraordinary fathers um you know and he is a self-made one of the hardest working individuals i've ever met in my life and um and taught me so much taught me about discipline that even though there's many examples i would say many you really could have worked much harder right but um just saying um, i'm trying Papa. i'm trying <laughs> he's uh but he um really, and fought for what he believed in. Um, he is so unbelievably generous and kind, and he's the chairman of the company, and uh, and I love him with all of my heart, and my sisters and I are very, very lucky. So mm -hmm. yeah, he's been a great mentor and visionary, and uh, he actually, when, when he left Lucas, when Lucas sold to Disney, and he started a production company in Prague, did this incredible film called the United Kingdom in South Africa. It's a true story. I don't know if you saw it, but if you haven't, no, please go. Down. This will be on your Netflix, um, Rosamund Pike and David Ayola Yola, two of the most extraordinary actors. And again, this amazing true story. So he's my dad's journey um, of really kind of starting out, you know, his first film was Pennies from Heaven and do you remember that film with Steve Martin? Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's a yeah, film right, forever. Right, I mean, it's as right. big as you can. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously the Star Wars and then came back around and is doing films and doing TV shows that things that he's passionate and that he loves and he has extraordinary teams and crews. And it's just, yeah, it's really built an exceptional life. So a wonderful mentor for me. Yeah, that's it. Couldn't be more valuable, especially you said like visionary, because sometimes you have an idea, but then it's how do you how do you act upon it? How do you make it happen? And that's where ninety nine percent of people they fail. Um, that is so great. All right, we're getting nice comments here. All right, I'm gonna put this one up. Let me get this one up. All right. What are they saying? I can't. Oh, thank you, thank you, Sherry. That's so nice of you. Thank you so much. It's not me. It's him. Wave. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. A great discussion. Yeah, because uh, thank you. Thank you, whatever. Sure. Yeah, it's just, I started to look over at the comments. And I'm like, yes, she is. Yes, she is. I'll get that down. Okay. Um, so you got him involved. That's incredible. And he said, as we continue to outsource digital work for films, video games, and publishing all over the world, I believe that Soho Muse will continue to make a radical difference. I absolutely, like I said, I believe it. I think eventually those big firms will be saying, we want to buy you out. We can't have you doing this. You know, here's a huge thing, but I don't think you'll sell 
I don't think you will because then they'll whatever corrupt it and make it so that's, it's not as valuable. You know, and that's my one thing. I really, you know, I, I hope for, and again, we have amazing partnerships as we're, as we're growing. Um, and that's what I hope. I hope that our alliances and as we build um, become more of a, of really such a distribution portal and content because our creatives are making so much content. We become the unbelievable resource. Music, mm -hmm. fashion, film. That's where the 3D environments it becomes a streamline of this amazing 360 degree world. So if let's say um, like a big comedian, they will now, they find out they actually can make much more money streaming something than going to the concert hall, selling tickets, splitting it in every different direction. They just go, hey, this is released $5 and 12 million people do it. Right. You're going to do that as well, that type of thing? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, a streaming portal of creatives. Oh, that is something else. Yes. That's really crazy. Okay, how do people get involved? Because anyone that's going to see this, they want to know what to do, um, how to do it. News.com, S-O-H-O. -O. You know, I really should start singing this, like <laughs> my little jingle. Or that nine times you do it. A little, oh, so cool. that a little cheesy. That could be a little bit cheesy. All right, we'll, we'll go. Soho Muse, S-O-H-O-M-U-S-E.com. Please come, please join our extraordinary community of amazing creatives. We want to have you. It's a safe place. Built by creative, creatives, by the way. That's oh, okay. Doing. Built by creatives for creatives. Yes. I like that. And that's right, you know, to catch a thief, you send a thief. To make a creative successful, you need successful creatives involved. Mm -hmm. And that's you guys. What a job you did. I can't wait. I've checked it out, but I actually, it, it's had a thing where you had, um, you had to sign up and is it a free, is it free now during Corona? Brad it's, told me or it's not free. It is. It's free. Each tier is free and then we're subscription based. Um, but yeah, for, for everyone right now, absolutely. It's free. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. There's no excuse. Everybody's got to go check it out. They do. Free. 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 Nothing. Yes, Doesn't same. cost anything. That's beautiful. Uh, I can't thank you enough. I if you could just say your name and then whatever you want to say about you and then they're watching Chance TV, that would make me very happy. Oh, uh, hi guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Chance TV. I'm Consuela Vanderbilt Costin, and this has been a real gift. Please stay safe, stay, stay connected. <laughs> um, tell someone next to you that you love them. It's important right now. I really mean that. Wow. Yeah. And if you have any internet connection, which you obviously do, go to SohoMuse.com. S-O-H-O-M-U-S-E.com. It's free. That simple. Great. Thank you so much for everything. I'm going to end this, the live streaming, but don't get off yet. Okay. Right. I'm broadcasty. I'm broadcast. Very good.